Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back, and we once again have uh, our food and travel uh, contributor, John Mariani. And uh, welcome, I John. Thank you. Good to be back. And on our other uh, other uh, person, my partner John Coleman, and we're the, the all we are all John. we're all we're all uh, physically, socially distant, but enjoying each other's company. Mm -hmm. Goodness, uh, Skype in the uh, in the age of COVID nineteen. Right. Who would have uh, John? I, it seems to me that uh, since we're all hunkered down and. Uh, isolated and all of that stuff uh, we're two weeks into our three-week um, sequester uh, for for the virus it, it's affected you and your business tremendously because you're a food and travel writer you can't travel or you don't certainly don't want to travel but you also probably don't go out to restaurants so you what are you doing during that for yourself for your business how do you how do you survive Fortunately, for the last uh, 45 years of my career, um, I worked out of my office in my home, which is where I am right now and I will be tomorrow. And unless I am traveling or unless I am going out to a restaurant, this is where I am. So it doesn't affect me insofar as going stock raving, uh, stir crazy because I'm used to it. Um, but I really do. I, I'm dying to go out to a restaurant once or twice a week, as I usually do. I'm dying. I turned down or a, a trip to Belgium. I was going out to Indianapolis. I was going to be going to St. Croix. I was going to go uh, be going go to Houston. All of that's down the tubes for the moment. Uh, Ireland and um, all these places just being held off until this uh, completely passes. Uh, I, like any sensible person, do not want to be in an airport, uh, even more so than being in an airplane where the air is actually cleaner. But to get, to, you know what those lines are like, you know, whether you're going through TSA or not, <clears throat> you are just bunched up against hundreds and hundreds of people. Um, that's not a place to be. At the moment, there are not hundreds and hundreds of people there, but then there aren't any flights taking off anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm restricted like anybody else. So the types of articles that I've been written have uh, been uh, more general in nature, like this week in my uh, uh, Mariani's Virtual Gourmet, I wrote a, uh, a story called uh, Burger Mania is Just Plain Dumb, and uh, tr shows how we went from you know, nice hamburgers when we were kids in diners to $55, $60 burgers with foie gras and so forth. So, um, and I've been reporting also a lot in my New York stories about restaurants that have GoFundMe for their employers, for, for their employees, and uh, who have, have set up websites for delivery. And um, so I'm doing what I can in that regard. I'm, I'm glad to see that uh, restaurants are doing takeout. I hope it's enough for them to survive. Uh, it's not. Because yeah, I, it, that's my fear. I love the local restaurants. Uh, you know, they're not the kind of places that uh, you would take me when we when you're doing the Esquire Best New Restaurants in L.A. But uh, they're wonderful family restaurants nearby, uh, and they they serve good food, good solid food. Everybody enjoys them. So I'm I'm really hoping that the restrictions are lifted very soon. And well, I, my so guess is that if restrictions are lifted in the next two weeks, I think that most of these smaller operations, restaurants, um, whether they're mom and pop or whether they have 15, 20 employees, they can survive. And the, the uh, takeout delivery is just uh, a way of shoring up this or that expense just to keep the lights on if they can do that at all. But three, four weeks, I think most can survive. It's, it, you know, the restaurant business. Uh, makes razor thin margins anyway. 10% of your gross is what goes into a restaurant tour's pockets if they're lucky enough to get through the first or second year. Um, but beyond that, um, uh, you, you take off that 10% and you have no profits at all. But after, if in two or three weeks, I think you will quickly see them reopen, especially the ones that are in place doing the pick, takeout and delivery. Their stoves are still hot. Their water is still on. Their electricity is still on. So they can respond very quickly. And I guarantee you 
that the employees whom they had to so uh, uh, sadly let go of, they got them on speed dial. They will be back in a New York minute. You know, you mentioned uh, airports and uh, airplanes. Uh, I can imagine that uh, as the restrictions get lifted, uh, they might even be done in uh, phases or whatever. But yeah. a lot of people won't want to fly for the reasons that you outlined. What do you recommend for people in terms of travel um, as things get looser, as we as we can all get out? Well, I think the only sensible uh, alternative, you don't want to get in a plane. You don't want to get on a train. I don't want to get on a Greyhound bus ever. <laughs> but... <laughs> Uh, so you get in your car or you rent a car and you go traveling and now you don't travel to New York, which is a hot spot. I mean, you're just basically you're going to be staying out of the big cities. But this country is so rich throughout the Midwest, throughout the South in small cities. You know, it's, it's how my wife and I became husband and wife. We were dating, dating. We were uh, together for five or six years. We took a 10 day vacation to Virginia, which I didn't know at all. I knew you know, Washington, D.C. and so forth. But I didn't know the little back roads of Virginia, the little towns you come into that uh, look pretty much the way they would in uh, in the 1930s or the 1950s. And there you'd eat the food of the people. I remember my wife asking for a uh, cup of tea. And there was a, you mean hot tea? She says, yeah, hot tea. I said, well, oh, we're going to have to warm up the iced tea. You know, these little idiosyncrasies of, <laughs> of traveling. Um, so that will be available to everybody very quickly. You know, there's not much coronavirus in Montana and Wyoming and Idaho. So, uh, the, um, But the ports of call, like uh, Seattle uh, and the Pacific Northwest, where you have enormous number of Asians were coming in and always have come in, and San Francisco, the same thing. Um, and Los Angeles, too. Uh, those are going to be continue to be hot spots for a long, long time. Yeah, and there are so many wonderful uh, mid-sized cities in the U.S. I think of uh, Memphis, Nashville, Indianapolis, uh, New Orleans, a uh, fabulous city. I don't know if New Orleans has a big problem with uh, the virus or not. It's Norm being a port, a big Norm port city, it might be. They yeah. think that they think that very soon uh, New Orleans will dwarf the problem that New York now has. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. That's too bad. Um, so in, in these cities, uh, you know, the wonderful thing about yeah, you know, just just one thing about New Orleans I wanted to say that yeah. Katrina was what ten years ago, twelve years ago, something that like that destroyed that city and put almost every restaurant out of business in that city. Today, there are more restaurants in New Orleans than there were before Katrina. Really? Very resilient industry. And as I've said before, when a crisis strikes in any form, first thing people do financially is oh, give up. We can't go to restaurants. Give up restaurants, whether it's about coronavirus or a financial downturn. The first thing they do when the crisis passes, let's go out to a restaurant. I think that so um, that's the canary in the coal mine. But but I mm -hmm. think I think the little difference between this and uh, Katrina is Katrina you weren't afraid of mixing with other people, and so here no. I think yeah. that, I think that what we need uh, because as I know a lot of people, including us, that are just not ordering takeout because mm -hmm. uh, the people who are working there and it's wonderful mm -hmm. that they're working there. Many of them will probably wind up getting. Uh, and, and hopefully recovering because many of them are younger uh, from mm -hmm. the virus and then therefore hopefully uh, not be able to work without infecting food in the future. But I think that once, to me, I think what's going to happen is once the testing, particularly in the large uh, areas, shows that most mm -hmm. people have been exposed and either recovered or are recovering from it, I think that's when people will start going back en masse to restaurants. Otherwise, you'll have a new wave of people getting ill. That's the only difference well, between this and Katrina. Katrina, you didn't get you didn't get sick uh, by touching somebody or or having tainted right. food in most cases. Well, you know, even if the if it pinnacles and flattens out, as they keep saying, even if it really flattens out, I think it would be wise not to go to restaurants that have a hundred seats. Um, in New York, it started out that any every restaurant has to cut their seating by fifty percent. The that went the 
the way of the dodo bird within uh, two days they closed down everything but um 50 seats is a lot better than having being in a room with 120 seats 120 people um so that would be a small bit of advice um to go to those kinds of restaurants that john was talking about the mom and pops um and so forth which has uh, smaller staff uh, fewer number of people and they are, I also think that one of the things I think that is going to happen is that restaurants are going to separate tables by a wider margin than they now are. Um, you know, counter restaurants in L.A. are very big and very, very hip. Um, a lot of people are not going to want to eat at a counter anymore with uh, a guy next to them that, that, that you don't know. And um, some of the, the some of the hippest restaurants and the loudest have been those where you ha either have a communal setting or you are jammed up to the next table because that's so gregarious and party-like atmosphere. I think that's going to change radically even after this is over. Good, good, good point. Good point. Um, well, let's hope that this does end soon and that uh, everybody stays healthy. And we John, thank you so much. Yeah, we really look forward to uh, uh, you getting back out in the world so that you can uh, share some of your current travels uh, with us and uh, with our audience. And again, uh, uh, if people want to find out more about John Mariani, they should go to Celebrating Act Two to the Contributors tab and uh, uh, look for your newsletter right there and they can sign up uh, right there and subscribe to your newsletters directly. They can also find out where to buy some of your books and other things that you've written over, including novels uh, that you have written and are continuing to write. So we thank you for joining us. And to everybody out there, stay safe, sequester until you're over this, until you're told to go out. And uh, we're going to have lots of fun uh, finding out where to eat the best food and drink the best wine. Thank you, John. And I'll be there to tell you about it. Thank you. Thank you, John. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.